guys, today we're unboxing and setting up a NAS service. This particular one is from Synology and it's the Distation DS1520 Plus. It's a five bay system. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing, including purchasing links. So one thing to note about this particular system, it's more suited for business users and for established personal usage. So for example, for myself, it'd be ideal for me because I'm a YouTuber, I've got tons of footage, need a lot of storage in the background. So it's expandable. So that's the nicety about this particular one. So let's take a quick look around the packaging. So it comes in a large box, some details over here, four core CPU with AES NI support. You've got four times one gigabit link aggregation here, supports M2, NVMe, SSD as system cache and expandable capacity on this. Spinning the box around, no additional details, got some info here. Hardware wise, shows the drives it's compatible with, three and a half, two and a half inch drives, just like the other systems I've reviewed. External ports wise, you get two USB 3 and eSATA wise, you get two ports. LAN connections, I've already mentioned, you get four, you've got the dimensions here, weight, and it has a three year warranty on there. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so you know the routine. I've laid out everything you get in the packaging. So let me quickly go through the items one by one. You get a quick installation guide document. You get two ethernet cables. Each one is 1.3 meters in length. Build quality is good. You get a power cable. The connection on there is the same one you'd use on a PC. The length of the cable is 45 centimeters and quality of the cable feels good. You get a power adapter. The output on this is DC 12 volts, 10 amps. Build quality feels good. Length of the cable on this one is one meter. And just to show the connection on the end, you get a bag of screws for installing the hard disks. You get two keys to allow you to lock the drive bays. Coming onto the disk station, in terms of dimensions, it's 23 centimeters by 16 and a half, and the depth is 22.3 centimeters. In terms of build quality, it's strong plastic all the way around. You've got the indicator lights here, status disk one to five, and then you've got a USB connection point power button here, drive bays are here, and to pull out a drive, it's just a matter of pulling that out and then you can pull out the caddy. If I put it back in again, we get the key just to show. You can lock the base so no one can pull out the drive. And now if I try pulling, it doesn't open. I'll do the next one, that opens fine. Coming around the side here, you've got their branding and a vent as well. Coming around the back, you've got two fans here. You've got two eSATA ports, DC power input, four LAN connection points, USB 3 port, a reset point, and a Kensington locking point here. The other side has, similar to the opposite, just branding and vents. Coming underneath, you've got four rubber pads, stop it slipping on a surface. And then if I open this, you've got the point where you'd put the M.2 memory. So two points there. So if I do that one, you can see that one as well. Now pulling out all the bays, let's have a look at the back of this. And coming close, you can see the SATA connection points at the back there. Processor in the system is an Intel Celeron J4125 4 core 2 gigahertz, and it has bursts up to 2.7 gigahertz. In terms of RAM, it comes with 8 gig DDR4 on there. Next, just to show a brief comparison of the latest NAS servers from Synology. You can see here the DS220 Plus, DS720 Plus, and obviously the one we're looking at at the moment, the DS1520 Plus. Now, in terms of style, it's very similar, all black matte finish on all of them. You can see the status indicators on all of them as well. Coming along the side here, you've got a copy button on the DS220 Plus and a power button. The other ones don't have the copy button. This is aimed more at the home user. And again, with these, you've got the USB 3 connection point on here. Now, looking at the DS220 Plus, if I pull the cover off here, you can just easily pull out the drives if you wanted to. Whereas with the other two, there's a locking mechanism, so you can lock them shut, so there's no way of pulling them out easily. Now coming around the back, you can see on these two, the DS220 Plus and the DS720 Plus, they've both got dual ethernet connections on here for link aggregation and redundancy as well. You've got a USB 3 port as well on both of these, but the 720 Plus has an eSATA port on there. Now coming over to the 1520 Plus, you can see you've got two eSATA ports and four ethernet connection ports. For a general home user, the DS220 Plus is more than sufficient. If you're looking for something more beefy, obviously the 720 would be the next progression up. And then finally, the 1520, obviously with its additional bays as well. Now, one of the things to be aware of with the 1520, it is scalable. So you can expand it to up to 15 drives with a DX 
517 expansion unit so that can be connected directly to this and it can work in conjunction so for business users or for more advanced home users who need a lot of storage this would be the ideal option really in terms of testing out the system i've got two hard disks here both are from seagate these are the iron wolf nas drives two terabytes in size each i won't show how to install these or installing the operating system only because i've done it multiple times i'll include a card over here if you click on that that will be another review i've done showing how to install the drives and the operating system on the device next just to show noise levels from the server with two hard disks installed and the server on at the moment if i go quiet for a second 39.7 decibels from there so noise levels are very minimal Okay, so I've installed the hard disks into the system, configured the operating system, and we're ready to go now. In the background, what I've also done, I've also created a share. So if I go to File Station, you can see it here, Team Geek Street, and there's a couple of documents already on there. Now, in terms of functionality, the general functionality on these systems is all the same. There's no difference between one and the other. The only thing you're gonna be gaining is obviously better performance, on the larger systems together with the additional ethernet ports on there as well now this particular system as i've already mentioned is aimed at businesses and established personal users now if i come out of this we go into package center one of the packages i wanted to show was active backup for business now going into this one i've installed this one already now the useful thing about this particular application you can install a client on your workstation or server and on a regular basis the system can be backing that up so to show what's available in terms of backup if i click open on here now this is what you're presented with and this is what will enable to monitor your environment and ensure it's getting backed up successfully. So very useful if you're a small business and you wanted a system large enough to cope with backing up all your team's workstations and even any additional servers you had in the background. Backing up is very simple. Literally, if I go to PC, add device, you just need to install a client. So I'll download the 64-bit client. And now if I click it, just go through the installation quickly. Launch the application and finish. And now it's asking for details of the server. So if I enter them in, click connect, give it a moment to connect to the server. And there you go, it's connected now. So if I okay to that, click okay in the web interface. And there you go, now it's picking up my desktop machine. So now I can create tasks to back it up. So you can see the default one here already, click edit on there. And you can see at the moment it's set up to back up the entire device. And there's a tick backup external hard disk. So if you did have an additional external hard disk plugged into the system, it will back that up as well. Then you've got the option to do a customized volume. So if I select that, if you had more than one drive, you could actually pick a different system as well. If you just wanted the C drive backed up, then that's possible. Or if you had a D drive, then that's possible as well. Now coming back through there, you've got a schedule on this as well. So you can set up a schedule on when you want these backups to occur. Remember for this to work, all your systems have to be on. So if I also go to retention, there's a retention periods available for this. If I now cancel out of that. And it's as simple as that to get a backup going. And if you wanted to initiate one straight away you can just hit back up now like i said this isn't limited to just pcs if you had any other physical servers or even virtual machines on your network you can get them backing up as well so a very useful option to have available obviously it is available with the other systems as well you're not limited to just this particular one to use this option the next two applications i wanted to show are the synology drive server and synology office so this if you had a small business and you wanted to collaborate as a team this provides the ability to make your own private cloud which your users can connect to save documents and share documents together now the synology drive server provides the mechanism of having a shared drive in the cloud and synology office provides the applications to enable you to work collaboratively so synology office actually provides the applications to work with so it provides a word processor spreadsheet tool and a presentation tool so to show this in action if i open up the synology drive server and what you can do if i show here team folder so i've already created as i've shown previously a share called team geek street what you can do here is enable it for access via a web browser so now if I come out of this 
and we go to main menu, Synology Drive, and you could have it set up. So when users log in, they could log into the system and just go to their drive. And there you have it, it's just here. And if I click on there, now, as you can see, there's two documents here already, review inventory, and that's the spreadsheet style document. And if I click on that, so now this is open, you can treat it like any other spreadsheet, just type away, put numbers in there. And now if I drag across, you can see the sum there. You can manipulate the data as well, just to show some of the options available on there. So basic functionality available here. And again, you're sharing it with your team as a collaboration and you're keeping it away from the internet. You're actually saving it on your own private cloud. This is the key thing here. Now it's not limited obviously to spreadsheets. If I go back there, you can see the word processor doc I've got there. And again, just type away, we'll save it. And then you can see the other options available in here. Next, just to show the presentation document. So if I click here, and there you go, similar to PowerPoint. So you can create your own presentations. Also worth mentioning, if I come on to the applications, you've got a view history, and this actually has a version history available of the changes that's happened. So you can roll back to different versions if you made a mistake. So you can see there, I've created that this time, and obviously the different changes that have occurred. If I click through them, you can see what's happened. So empty initially, I added in that, and then I added in that. Very useful, and again, you can restore that or even make a copy of that particular version. Same applies also to Excel as well. View history, there we have it. Very useful functionality here. There's also a client you can install on your workstation. If you've installed that, then you don't initially have to go to a web browser to get onto the drive. So if I open up my file explorer, go to Synology Drive, this is how it appears on your workstation. You can see there Team Geek Street share on there. And going in there, you can see the two doc. Now you're not limited to just using their suite of Office products. You can just add other files into the location. So if I right click here and we go to text document, there you go, we've got a test text document there and it's synchronized now to the server. And put test in there. But remember, things like version control are only available for their suite of Office products. So next, if I power down the server, Let's see what happens. I'm just shutting it down in the background now. Okay, so the server's off now. And if I open this up, make a slight change, save it again. And if I refresh, you can see there the sync icons on, meaning it hasn't synced back to the server. So it will remain like that until it has connectivity back with the server. So let's see how it copes with the Synology documents now. If I double click that, connection failed. So for the Synology Office Suite, it has to be a live connection. So it's not going to work offline on those. If I now just create a different document, even if it is just a Word document, just to give an example, got it there. Test doc put in there, I'll save that, close it off. And you can see again, that's waiting now to be synced up. So now if I power on the server, Okay, so the server's powered on now, and if I just do a refresh, let's see if it syncs up. And there you go, they're synced up now. So now looking on the server, there you go. You've got the text document that's come across and the Word document that's come across. So here's an interesting feature in the Office Suite. So you can actually have multiple people working on the same document at the same time. So I've logged on with a separate user called User1 on my Android device, and you can see it here. I can just click around, and if I click in there, just type in test, you can see it appear. Now, coming over to my PC, I can also work on the same document too at the same time. So now, you can see both screens at the same time. Geek Street 1. And now if you look at my phone, it's also appeared. Now, the other thing you can do, you can see where the users currently is. So if I click there, it just highlights here, user 1, as you saw. And if I click away, there you go. You can see the cursor moving away. Now, what if I click on the same cell as the other user, 
and over here I put number two and it's the last one that enters in wins so you see there number two was the last one that so good bit of functionality here you can have a Synology drive where you can just dump your documents if you're working away from your network or you're working on the go put your documents in there when you're back where you've got an internet connection you can sync up back to your private cloud with your Synology Office documents, obviously you need to be online for them to be accessible. It's a nice bit of functionality from this and you don't have to pay for any additional licenses for the Office suite they provide. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing of the Synology Disk Station DS1520 Plus. Five bay NAS here, ideal for businesses and IT enthusiasts. So if you're a YouTuber, for example, perfect for that. As you're growing your channel, you're gonna be grabbing lots of footage. You're gonna need someone to store it. The system itself is expandable to up to 15 drives with an expansion unit available from Synology. Performance is pretty good compared to some of the other ones. Obviously it is aimed at a higher market. I've demonstrated Synology Drive for you and it gives you the equivalent of a Google Drive where you can work offline if you wanted to and synchronize back to your own private cloud. You've got Synology Office, own suite of office products you don't need an additional license for that which is really good and you have active backup as well where you can back up other servers or even your own pcs on the network so excellent bit of functionality available on this and i hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this details including purchasing links are in the description below hang around for the end cards i'll have some more NAS servers if you're interested in checking them out. Hit the like button if you've liked this video. Drop me a comment, let me know what you thought of this NAS server. If you haven't liked it, let me know why you haven't liked it. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.